So, um, let's move on to what you're famous for. I noticed you brought a, you have a few books that you're an author of. Yeah, which is fantastic. Sure. We want, I want to talk about Inco terms. It's quite a hot topic. What, what are Inco terms? What do they stand for? And uh, well, please tell us about your books. That's the book. That's not my book. It's the International Chamber of Commerce, yep. based in Paris, their head office. And since 1936, these Inco terms, which are called <laughs> International Commercial Terms, so Inco terms is a condensation of that. Um, they they revise these uh, every now and again, and the last three revisions have been done every 10 years. And the reason for the changes is generally some change in the methodology or the systems involved in transport or trade. And one of the big things uh, early last decade was 9-11, uh, the, the Twin Towers in, in New York that most people are aware of, and terrorism. And the USA brought in lots of... Uh, uh, control measures to try and stop something like that happening again and obviously things coming into the country is people on planes but also cargo on planes and ships so there's lots of restrictions and so they've, they've incorporated some of the uh, requirements that the uh, Department of Homeland Security in, in America uh, requires reporting from overseas exports before they actually leave the overseas country and so they incorporated some of those conditions in here the European Union now is actually incorporating some of those laws similar to what the US has and it's making it a lot harder for people exporting to those particular countries to, uh, well it's not making it harder but it's, it's the timing of the information that the US government or the European Union government requires. So just just adds to the, the red tape aspect of it. Um, also the, the USA uh, had some rules for domestic trade and they actually um, changed those rules within America back in 2004. And so they, they dealt and, and basically lobbied the, European, uh, sorry, the uh, International Chamber of Commerce to incorporate some of the terms that were used to make them uh, appropriate to domestic sales within the USA. So now these terms have always been relating to international. Now it says... ICC, which is the International, International Chamber of Commerce, Commerce yep. rules for the use of domestic and international trade. The problem is too that a lot of people uh, misunderstand or misuse the terms. They use a particular term because it's maybe always been done that way. Like the FOB, for example. FOB is a typical example, and and you're an expert in China, mm. and you're probably familiar that a lot of people use FOB for air freight, um, and it's it's a maritime law. It's got to be on a ship or a or some waterborne vessel. And so that's been a typical thing in many parts of the world, but particularly in China, that using FOB as an air freight term. But it's been clarified, particularly in, in this revision, it really apparently was the case uh, in the Inco Terms 2000, but even for containers on ships today, they, they suggest you don't use the maritime terms because the, the seller has a different point of the risk passing from the seller to the buyer because generally with containers you're handing it over not at the wharf or but at, the at, at a terminal or a depot if you're loading an and LCL container. And quite something as FOB, you might be actually taking on risk that you're not really necessary to take on. And you and don't have control over. Yeah. That's probably the thing. It's the risk and the control that you may not have. So just by quoting it that way, you could get yourself in a, a load of trouble. Yep. I got you. All right, and look, what are the most commonly used INCO terms? If someone's importing from China, there are like three or five. That, like, I mean, there's, there's hundreds, of course, but what are the five most common ones that you well, would recommend people should know? Yeah, they've actually broken them down from 13 terms yep. to 11 in this current, uh, current review. And I guess the most common ones would be that I, you know, I, I've come across in my activities as a customs broker was probably free on board. Yep, FOB. Uh, cost and freight, C uh, CIF, C yep. uh, and CIF, cost, insurance and freight. Yep. Now, once again, those three terms are C freight terms. So what I'd be suggesting to people um, anywhere in the world, but if you're dealing with, with uh, China, to take away the risk from your contract, and whether that's a, a, a seller or an exporter from China, or whether it's the buyer in Australia, both have to look after their own risks and control measures. So I would be suggesting they use free carrier 
uh, as a term in in China if they're selling it from China uh, without Which is uh, looking F after the freight. FC is, it, is it? free carriers FCA. FCA, yeah. okay. And that means that the buyer pays the freighter when it arrives in their country. And there's no risk. The the risk, risk is is better managed that yep. way by both parties. If 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 it's cost and freight, instead of using that, I would use whether sea freight or air freight use carriage paid to, where the seller is actually organising uh, the, the loading onto the the aircraft or the vessel and paying the freight to destination. That's a fantastic tip. Yeah. And and the benefits of that are. Well, you better I, whoever's organising the logistics of the international transport part are better able to manage their risk with their freight forwarder, shipping line, airline, whoever they're using in that respect. Okay, fantastic. Would you say it's necessary to learn all 11 INCO terms to be a successful importer? No, I wouldn't say to learn them all, but I, I guess the best way would be to be familiar with them. And, and so that if you're in a discussion and, and a term that you're not um, aware of or not familiar with, you might be a bit bamboozled. So I guess it's better to, to understand what they are. It's not that hard to learn about them. Mm -hmm. um, but to just have an awareness of them. But when you go into a negotiation, I would generally suggest that people um, um, have you know maybe two or three terms that they would prefer to use themselves, depending on the situation. So you look like you know what you're doing when you're dealing with the, the supplier in China. Exactly. If you're using common terminology proficiently, you're going to end up getting a better price. If you yeah. look like you don't and you're doing, you're going to get that, that charge as well. So a lot of these things can be found in the whole customs realm, you know, to, to look professional and know exactly what you're doing. That's a fantastic tip. Um, where could someone get... So that's the in in Inco Terms book. Yep. So what's the actual title of it? How would you get a... Your so it's Inco work? Terms uh, 2010. Yep. Um, they, can, they can get them straight from Paris, as I did. You can go onto their website and find it there. But most countries will have that available, either through their International Chamber of Commerce affiliate in that country, or through Chambers of Commerce or business organisations that might be distributing that in their country. Okay. So, yeah, check your local country first. If not, go to Paris. <laughs> fantastic. And also... Or take a trip to Paris. That would be even better, wouldn't it? It would be fantastic. Make a business holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you claim it off for tax as well. 